Hey, what's up DIYers? Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're working on our furnace and in today's video, the step-by-step -step process on how to properly and safely replace your inducer motor and a couple additional parts that connect to it. Let's get started. All right, DIYers, safety first always. Go to your wall-mounted thermostat and turn it to the off position. All right, DIYers, downstairs in our furnace room right now and as you can see, we have a Bryant furnace and also known as a carrier on the right hand side, you've got this switch. Make sure you turn that off. We've got this little knob here that extends a screw all the way through to secure this panel to that portion of the furnace. Go ahead and unscrew that and remove your cover panel. Set that in a safe location. And to the furnace, here is what our internal portion of the furnace looks like. And here is our inducer fan. The motor itself is right there and the mount and bracket it secures itself too as well as the rubber grommet gaskets and in the event that yours fails well your furnace won't turn on so what we're going to do is grab some tools and remove that entire part first thing we'll do is remove the electrical connections and you've got the black wire on the upper or left lead go ahead and carefully remove that and then you've got the white wire on the lower or right connection and shift those aside. What I have now is a regular screwdriver with a quarter inch bit on it. What we will do first is remove the three quarter inch screws that secure the inducer bracket to the furnace. You've got one here, you've got one that secures your ground screw, and then right up at the top, go ahead and remove all three of those. First screw we are going to remove is the screw that the ground wire is connected to. And be careful as you remove that third screw, make sure you have a hand on the bottom portion of the inducer unit to alleviate it falling on any wiring or any other parts. From here, carefully remove the entire mount. And here's what the inside looks like. Check that out. I wanna show you something, look at this. Not good. At the table now, and we've got a bunch of new parts. And the first thing we are going to do is grab our pliers and remove this little locking clip that secures the fan to the motor. Some people use a flathead screwdriver, others use pliers. All we're going to do is carefully remove this locking clip without harming the fan. And there it is. As you can see, we kind of damaged it pretty good. However, we bought a brand new one for $1.99. At this point, you can carefully pull off your fan blade just by wiggling it and it comes off as you can see here from here flip the unit over and on the back side you've got your fan and take a good look at the inner portion here you see how it is flush with the actual rod of the motor just to the side of it you have an allen screw and it's trial and error until you find the perfect allen wrench that will fit it and go ahead and insert it in the allen screw and loosen it up so we can actually pull this fan blade off and believe it or not you may need some blaster carefully spray it on the screw itself and let that sit for about 15 minutes. After patiently waiting about 15 minutes for that penetration solution to work itself into the Allen screw and then tugging at this for another 15 minutes, finally broke it loose. Come to the side, check out this little indent here. And it's only on one blade. Go ahead and insert your Allen wrench through and you can actually insert it into the Allen screw and you can unscrew it a lot faster. All right, DIYers, if you are having trouble pulling this portion off the rod, I'm going to show you what I did. I've got an actual nail set tool and I'm going to position it dead center on the rod and I'm going to hold it with one hand and tap this out with another. There we go. Next, go ahead and turn this over and we are going to remove the three quarter inch screws that secure the outer plate to the inner plate and house those rubber grommet gaskets. Making progress, three screws are removed. You can carefully shift this apart. On the backhand side, you've got additional quarter inch screws. Go ahead and remove these three closest to the actual center rod. With those three screws removed, I've got them organized in the same pattern. They will go back on carefully. Pull this plate up and off. And this is your old inducer motor and now it's junk, set that aside. We are also going to replace all these rubber grommet gaskets and carefully pull these out. I may need both hands. And take note of how these are designed. On the front side, it's basically flush. On the back side, you have a washer and these just pop out. Set that aside and grab your new one. And you might wanna clean this a little bit with a 
towel or rag. Bottom washer portion as shown here will go on the bottom. You've got that little groove. Go ahead and carefully shift it in place and do this for all three grommet gaskets as shown here. All three grommet gaskets are installed. Let's go ahead and open up the inducer wheel and motor. New wheel and motor are out of the box. Just verify they are the exact same part number and spitting image design between the two as well as your wheel. From here, we'll grab the new motor. We will position this in place and secure it with those screws. Next part's important. You've got a longer rod on the right-hand side and a shorter rod on the left-hand side, and that has a flat spot there. That is what your fan slides onto and the two plates will go on the back side as well as your wheel. As far as the position of the motor, I've got a place like that and I will slide the plate back on and I will align the three screw holes and secure those three screws. After securing the three screws, I've got the arrow in the bottom right hand corner and go and align your plate. You've got the part number here and on the back side of this is the part number. Your part numbers will actually meet and slide into place and secure the plates together with all of your grommet gasket screws. As you insert and secure these, do your absolute best not to over tighten them. You are screwing into aluminum. You don't wanna over tighten them. Next, for your peace of mind, I want to show you how it looks like at this point. You've got your motor, the bottom electrical leads, and you've got the shield above it. That's how it's supposed to look. Carefully turn it over. We are going to install our wheel. And you've got a flat portion on this rod as well. Go ahead and insert your wheel, and it should slide right on. And you'll notice that it slides all the way down. You actually want it up flush with that top portion of the rod. And that screw will secure itself to the flat portion of that rod. Fan blade wheel is secured and a lot straighter when it spins. Now it's time to insert the fan. Carefully install the fan blade on the rod. And here is our new securing clip. Here's our new part number. The bottom side is indented inward and the top portion is indented upward and we will slide the clip on and push this fan blade in place and secure it, as shown here. I'll set that aside. Here is our brand new gasket. There is our part number, and that is what it looks like. Let's go back to the furnace and pull the old one off. Back to the furnace and carefully remove the old gasket, and it looks like it's going to come apart in pieces. Be careful, don't drop any of it inside the furnace. Make a progress, old gasket is off, and here's the new gasket. I recommend cleaning the surface prior to inserting this new gasket in place and carefully run it around the little edge here. And we will go grab our inducer motor and insert it and secure it. When you position this in place and secure it, the electrical leads for the motor will be facing the lower left. I've got the unit reinstalled in the furnace and I secure the upper screws and the bottom screw, remember, has to secure this ground to the plate. Next, secure your electrical wiring, and the white one, again, was on the lower right, and the black one on the upper left. From here, make sure you're not leaving any tools behind. And what we will do is come to the right side switch, turn that on, go back up to the wall-mounted thermostat, turn everything on, and I'm going to run you through the sequence of events that take place to get your heat going. Back to the wall-mounted thermostat, go ahead and turn it to heat. Let's go back downstairs. Back downstairs, we're patiently waiting for it to turn on. There it goes. And the first thing that goes on is your blower fan down below. It's going to go through a test cycle, make sure it's getting proper ventilation from up above. And the next thing that will happen, your inducer motor will turn on, your fan will start spinning, and then down below, your igniter, your gas, and flame sensor, and heat. And this can usually take up to 30 to 60 seconds for everything to start. And the inducer motor is on, the fan is spinning, and that's a lot quieter than the old one. Next thing that will happen is the internal igniter tip will begin to heat up, your gas will begin to be introduced, and as you can see, it is starting to glow. Once it hits a certain temperature, the gas will be introduced and your flames will ignite. and tell the computer everything is up and running properly and from here you are heating your home.
DIYers, hopefully this helps. Do us a favor, below the video, you'll see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. And again, that is so much quieter than the old one. And one last thing, I want to show you how straight it is spinning. What we'll do is resecure the cover panel and enjoy the rest of the day.